Today we're behind the scenes in the chemistry department with Bernadette Harkness, chemistry discipline coordinator, and Ron Sharp, professor of chemistry. Bernadette, could you tell us about chemistry at Delta College, the types of classes, and how many students are in them? We have a wide variety of classes. Many of them are um, transfer credits for students who will go on to four-year colleges. Some of them are for programs, specific programs um, operated by Delta, and some for, for programs operated by affiliated schools. We have um, each fall and winter about 600 students across those courses, and in the spring summer about 250. So we have a lot of students attending classes. And how many professors are uh, full-time um, faculty and staff are there? Ron, I think we're seven full-time now. Seven full-time faculty and... And now about six part-time, so we have a, quite a full load. And all uh, from various different dis, uh, kind of backgrounds, academic backgrounds in terms of the location. We have some who have been educated locally. And for myself, I was um, from um, some international experiences. And Ron, you've had some other experiences. Well, and we've have, we have various backgrounds of the faculty. I mean, we have inorganic chemists. We had Theoretical, I'm, I tend to be a theoretical and organic. We have analytical. Uh, we have uh, biochemistry. Uh, so we have, we have the spectrum. There's usually five main areas of chemistry, and we have most of them covered. And uh, the students in uh, taking chemistry classes, what are they uh, studying for, uh, for their programs? Well, I, I sort of anticipated this question, and so at my, uh, I just got out of class, and so I asked that very question of my students, and. Uh, very heavy in, in pre-health sciences, pre-med, pre-dent, pre-vet, pre-physical therapy, uh, engineering students, uh, a couple of chemistry majors, uh, physics majors, so healthcare seems to be the driving force here today. A lot of pre-nursing students too. Um, some of them, or many of them, kind of keep chemistry for last. Kind of, I think they just save the best for last, don't you think, Ron? Yeah, I think. <laughs> and then they uh, go on to their clinicals. So, uh, they we do have a number of nursing students who are part of the SVSU program or other programs that require that. And our spring summer is. I always teach spring and summer. I love to teach that because we get students from all over Michigan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had Michigan and state and central and Grand Valley, and it's just fun to see those students interact and. We find that our Delta students can compete very well with all these students from the, from the various universities. It's sort of fun to watch all those students interact. And in your experience, what type of people are good at chemistry and might be interested in the field? I think you have to have kind of a, a logical um, way of thinking. Things are, are, make sense to you in certain steps. And I think you have to have some attention to detail because we have lots of exceptions in chemistry and a few rules. So if you have an understanding that there's going to be those exceptions uh, creeping up and keep an eye out for that, I think you'll do well. Uh, what else do you think, Ron? Uh, well, an English, major, an English major might not say this, but stick to itness. <laughs> You've got to have that follow through. At times, you need to be logical as Bernadette says, but you got to think out of the box. What just happened? I tell my students, it's more of a fun to have a bad day in a chemistry lab than a good day, because that's where you really, really learn. I think it's the curiosity of why did that happen, okay. you know, and really wanting to understand why did that happen, and uh, or being able to see patterns and how does that pattern help me think about what will happen next, and curiosity and and just that motivation and love of learning. I think that really just all will work out for someone who wants to do chemistry and a math skill or two. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably our students struggle with that more than anything else in, in the chemistry classes is, is math and being able to use their calculators to their full capacity. Because we send a lot of students to pre-professional schools and to, to get there, you've got to take all those MCATs, PCATs, and they're all timed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think science should be a rush, but I try to teach my students, you need to understand the tools you're working with. I had to use a slide rule, <laughs> and I teach them that they need to be to use those tools to, the, to their capacity. Right now and in the future, what sorts of jobs and fields uh, do you see using a lot of chemistry that people might uh, consider? Well, 
right now, uh, we have a number of tech programs here that are very successful. Chem tech, uh, uh, water environment technology, biotech, chem processing. There, there, there's really m more need for that tech person today than there is for someone with a, a bachelor's degree in a non-applied field. I mean, everything seems to have a direction today. And our students are taking advantage of that. Then they'll go on to CMU, if they choose, uh, they'll go on to CMU or Saginaw Valley because once they get that job in the technical field, many of the employers will, will contribute to, their, to that bachelor's degree education. That's true. That experience, uh, for we have many students who are involved in the co-op uh, program and the area uh, industries really help us out and give them that experience. So I think that's where we're quite well situated for to give them that experience as well, to couple their education here with their um, practical education with the employers and then go on if they, if they choose to, to the four-year schools. Yeah. Well, thank you both uh, for joining me today behind the scenes so that we could learn more about chemistry. And Bernadette, I'm wondering if I could get into one of your classes later this week. Uh, I have uh, my, the winter classes are roster starting. I have quite a few spaces, so anytime, <laughs> Leanne. Okay. And Leanne is here just to help us with some of these demonstrations. We're gonna keep it in this because we want to contain um, what we need to. So. Uh, before we did this the very first day, I don't know if you remember that far away uh, or that long ago. This is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Um, Leanne, can you pour it up to where that 50 line is? You can find that. A little bit more or less is fine. Perfect. Okay. So it's 70% hydrogen peroxide. What type of solution is it? Pure substance or mixture? Mixture, very good, because it has some water in it, too. I'm going to add a little bit of soap. Mix it up. Okay. So we, again, have a mixture with a few um, gas molecules or gas, um, gas compounds. 30 mils up to there. Leanne's going to put in uh, a catalyst for our reaction. Great. This is potassium iodide. You know what this compound would be. And you can do you can pour it. I'm gonna stand back here. <laughs> Fast as you can. There you go. And so we've just undergone a production where we have oxygen vapor and actually water as well. So uh, H2O2, it now has given us oxygen and water. What kind of reaction is that? H2 decomposition, very good. And we put a little foam just to make it exciting. All right, um, so if you continue on with your um, worksheets, and then we'll wrap up. I'll give you a few clicker questions at the end. Thank you, Leanne, for joining us and, and for helping out. Thank you for letting me come in and see all these great experiments in your class at work. Thank you.